Hi, thanks for clicking on this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope you enjoy this message. But, but I want to talk to you this morning. Uh, 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 my message that I'm going to be speaking is Psalm chapter 16, verse 1 through 11. I had something totally different, and God had to intercept me. And I'm so glad that he did, because when I walked in the atmosphere and the worship began to go forth, I understood why God is leading us the way that he is. Psalm chapter 16, verse 1 through 11. I'll give you guys a, a second. All of my iPhone folk going to have it in 30 seconds. Team iPhone, come on and let the world know that Jesus saves, huh? The prayer line will be open for all my Android saints. Preserve me, O oh God. For in you I put my trust, my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who has hastened after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer nor take up their names on my lips. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shoal, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, for in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And I'm really going to be focused on verses five through six, but there's so much in this text that is just so rich. You know, when he says, I have set the Lord before me, I have set the Lord before me. Setting something before you is literally like picking something up and you position it. You put it in a stationary location. What's interesting about that is when I read that, it takes me back in my spirit to when God has an encounter, hallelujah, in the book of Exodus with Moses. And he says, Moses, listen, no man can see God and live, okay? But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow my goodness to pass before your eyes. And then he further breaks it down so that Moses can understand that when he was saying my goodness, he was actually speaking about what was in back of him. He said, I'm going to let you see my backside as if to say, listen, I already did it. I already took care of it. There are things that have already taken place in my past, but it's getting ready to be your future. And so when he says, I've set the Lord before me, he's saying the things that God has already perfected concerning me, the things that God has already worked out concerning me, the things that God, the ways he's already made. He said, I'm setting it before me. Some of us need to set the Lord before us today because you've been looking at the wrong thing. You've been focused on the wrong thing. Come on, you've been looking at everything that the enemy is saying and missing the fact that there are things that God has already done. There are, hallelujah, adversaries he's already conquered. There are battles he's already won. So he says, you are my portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. You take care of me. The lines have fallen to me in all the pleasant places. Now, the word pleasant means agreeable. 
It means approved, designated, surpassing, commendable, affecting the mind agreeably, affecting the mind agreeably, affecting the mind agreeably. Do you realize that when somebody is having emotional and mental problems, there is literally a disagreement in their soul? Your soul, hallelujah, is incongruent with the will of God. And so it causes for your mind, hallelujah, to be destabilized. And so when, when, when there's, a, there's something that is pleasant, hallelujah, happening in your life, it means that it's affecting your mind agreeably. So the way that the spirit world or the spirit realm operates is that God establishes things. He sets things up. He formulates it, designs. He creates things. But then the enemy, what he'll do because he does not have the, 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 uh, the power or the ability to create, he will simply hijack what God has taken or what God has done, what God has created, and he will pervert that thing. And so that means that if it is possible for you and I as a child of God to have a portion in God, right? A portion is something that has been set aside for you. So if I can have a portion in God set aside for me by God, what does that mean? It means that the enemy can also intend to have a portion that is demonic set aside for you. So if it's possible for me to have a cup in God, if it's possible for my lines to fall in pleasant places in God, for me to have a good inheritance, then it is possible for the devil to hijack my destiny and to push the lines that were intended to be pleasant into unpleasant places. The intention of God is that your lines fall in pleasant places. But what the enemy does is he hijacks you at the door. He hijacks you at the gate. Come on. We're in 5784. We've entered into the year of the open door. Come on. We are in the year of the gate. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says what? Hallelujah. It says that, that, that behold, I have set before you an open door. Come on. That no man can close because you have obeyed my word. You have kept my word before you have little strength and so the enemy understands the amount of energy the amount of strength the amount of obedience it took for you to get to the door and that by the time you get there you're gonna be tired you're gonna be exhausted you're gonna be worn out and so he waits for the opportunity to hijack you after you've gone through all of this and you done got to the door that's when he coming for you Many of us are in danger of missing our pleasant lines because we are exhausted. We're not making good decisions. We're not able to see, come on, what is good from evil. We're not able to understand what the mind and the will of God is. And so the enemy just pushes you out of the intended line that God had for you. One of the things I love about supernatural ministry is that it can be so dynamic because it forces us to confront the fact that some of our lines have been hijacked and they have been pushed from pleasant to unpleasant places. And when I say lines, I want to make it very clear which lines I'm talking to you about this morning. I'm talking to you about your family line. I'm talking to you about your blood line. How many know or understand what a virus is when you have, back in the day, you know, when all of us was on them old school computers before the Macs came out, you would get a virus and your whole world would come crashing down? Because there was something foreign that insinuated itself into your operating system, causing you not to be able to function optimally. And so when it comes to your bloodline and your family line, what the enemy wants to do is he wants to hijack your ability to function optimally, to be in the earth who God intended for you to be. And so he hijacks your bloodline. And before you know it, instead of y'all being wealthy and influential, come on, you got uncles in the crack house. Instead of you being in ministry and serving the Lord, you got sisters and nieces walking the streets. Instead of you being being in the earth who God has ordained you to be, you live below the privilege for which you were created. Yeah. 
because your bloodline has been hijacked. I'm going to give you some information to help this make sense in your spirit. Listen, over 90% of sickness and different conditions that we experience in our body, scientists, medical science, help us to understand that it is brought on or it is provoked by inflammation. Now, I'm still talking to y'all about lines. The scripture tells us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 29 that when the children of Israel became disobedient to God, that the curse that was a result of their disobedience was inflammation. When there was infidelity in scripture, we find that as the people would engage in infidelity and they would, you know, uh, 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 they would break their marriage covenants, they would dishonor marriage covenants, that the result of that was a curse that would cause the abdomen to be enlarged and swollen. And it would also be a curse of miscarriage and barrenness that would hit the bloodline. I want to help this make sense to you in 2020 terms. What do you think a fibroid is? It is the swelling of the abdomen. When there are broken covenants or severe violations to covenants, which is considered an abomination before the Lord, it results in desolation. Biblically, abomination includes idolatry, sexual sin, child sacrificing, which in case y'all didn't know, in just a few days, it's a whole bunch of people getting ready to sacrifice their children to the enemy for the sake of a holiday. I said what I said. Ooh, I just felt a shift. <laughs> Somebody say, devil, I ain't scared of you. That part. So an abomination includes uh, sacrificing your children. The Bible calls it passing your children through the fire or offering them to Molech. Molech was a God that required that children be sacrificed in the womb. That is where we get our modern day word abortion. Abortion was actually a demonic act of worship in the Bible. I'm going to say again, abortion was a demonic act of worship in the Bible where babies would be offered from the womb uh, to a deity named Molech. Molech. And this would bring a curse on the land. It would bring barrenness on the people. It's interesting to me that in a season or in a time we're living in where so many engage in, in worshiping uh, deities of fertility, we have some of the highest infertility rates uh, ever known to man. Uh, as the people are burning sage uh, and burning incense uh, and offering themselves, uh, come on, and taking baths and leaves and going into the moon and doing all this stuff uh, to worship these deities of energy. Why is it that your worship is still not producing seed? Oh, it's the high tide. It's the, it's the high moon. So we're going to get dressed in white and, and we're going we're gonna to go out and we're going to stare at the moon and we're going to call on the ancestors of, of fertility and blessing. But, 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 but we still have the highest rates of infertility that have ever known, that have ever been known to man. As our worship of the demonic has increased, so has barrenness. My God. And so Matthew 24, 15 through 16 says it speaks of something called the abomination of desolation. The word desolation or the word desolate in the Greek means barren. It means destitute. It means to lay waste, to dilapidate, or to be unmarried. This is why when Isaiah, I believe 54 or 58 talks about more shall be the children of the desolate woman or the unmarried woman because desolation means unmarried. And so we have an epidemic of people who are believing God. Come on, for a godly mate, we have an epidemic of people who've been waiting past their time. It's been 
been 20 years overdue. It's been 25 years overdue. Could it just be that the land has fallen under a curse of barrenness? Because our lines have been kicked out of pleasant places into unpleasant ones. Some of our lines have been transferred from pleasant places to places of torment, places of delay, sickness and infirmity, calamity, drought, destruction, and oppression. Our family lines have predisposed us to cycles and patterns of rising and falling. Starting but never completing. Premature death. Unsanctioned suffering. Illegal seizures of our destiny. Blockage of prosperity. Serial divorce. It used to be uh, 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 in our parents' days, you know, if you heard that somebody got married, it was, uh, got, got divorced, it was like, what? Now people are like, oh yeah, this is my fourth one. And nobody bats an eye. Nobody is bothered by it. It doesn't make you uncomfortable. Because the enemy has normalized unpleasant lines. He has normalized cancer in your bloodline. And so when all of y'all get to about 35 or 45, you start looking for the breast cancer because everybody else in your bloodline got hit with it at 40. He has normalized, uh, hallelujah, young men in your family not going to college and ending up in prison. Y'all just expect to get a call that Junior got shot somewhere in the street. Because the unpleasant lines have been normalized. And we don't even realize that we are in a cycle of unpleasantness and horror and terror. And it's not what God intended for you. And this is how you know that your lines have been hijacked. Because you struggle more than you win. I know Hollywood wants to make struggle sexy, but can I tell you something? It's not the will of God that you would struggle. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. It says it is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. So you tell me where in the word of God struggle is sexy. I'm not telling you that we can't work hard. I'm not telling you that we can't push ourselves. I'm not telling you that we can't be valiant. But what I am saying to you is that when you work hard and don't have nothing to show for it, it's demonic. You know that your lines have been hijacked when you're cycling in scarcity. There's never enough. You make money and don't know where it's gone. I talked to somebody about a week or so ago that came to me crying. She says, I, I don't understand what's happening. I just, I just literally had a hundred thousand dollars that was given to me and my husband. And it's been a few months and I literally don't know what happened. It's all gone. And she says, this just keeps happening. We get large sums of money. We build a business. We kick it off. It takes off. And then before I know it, all I have left are ruins. It's a cycle of scarcity. You know that your lines have been hijacked. When you expect to fight for any ounce of success or favor or grace to hit your life. You're conditioned, hallelujah, to toil and to suffer. Your timeline has been delayed beyond normal. Iniquity is running rampant in your bloodline. Curses are landing on you left and right. Strange and mysterious occurrences, including illnesses, are happening to you. They're happening to your children. Come on, you woke up and, 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 and all of a sudden your perfectly healthy child starts having seizures out of nowhere. And all of 
of a sudden they want to put all these labels uh, on your perfectly beautiful baby. They want to tell you that they're developmentally slow. They want to tell you that they have Down syndrome. They want to tell you that they got a missing chromosome. They want to tell you all this stuff. Come on, that is not what God ordained for your life. Listen, this morning, God is about to disarm the devil. Did you hear what I said? I said, God is about to embarrass Satan in your life. He is about to make a public spectacle out of the devil. Why? Because the Bible declares, uh, hallelujah, that the people perish uh, for a lack of knowledge. Uh, The moment I know what I did not know before, the game is going to have to change. It says that when you find the thief, he's got to return to you. Proverbs chapter 6, sevenfold. Do you know, Pastor DJ, why people never acquire their sevenfold is because we don't know that we actually have to contend for it. We make the assumption that the devil, have you ever met a thief that would just willingly give you back what they took? And so it implies to us uh, that once I identify who took my stuff, I got to confront them and take my stuff back by force. You don't go up there and say, hey, um, hi, I live across the hall and um, I think you may have stolen my Nintendo system. Could you just kindly give it back? Hey, um, the other night we saw you on our camera stealing our car. Could you kindly drive it back to our driveway? Thanks. I didn't grow up like that. You're going to catch these hands. I said you're going to catch these hands. Because what we're not fitting to do, come on, I live in Atlanta. What we're not fitting to do is stand there and let the enemy take our children, take our marriage, take our money, take our ministry, take our future, take our heritage, take our land and our inheritance. You're not fitting to mess up no more marriages in my bloodline. You're not fitting to interrupt any more destiny in my family. And here's what I need you to understand. He says, you are the portion of my inheritance, right? What is an inheritance? An inheritance is property. It is something that is legally left to you. That means that there is a legal document that says that nobody can have this but Janae. Nobody can have this but John. Nobody can have this but Ruthie. And so, and so, it don't matter how nice I am, I can show up there and say, hey, I know Ruthie, and I know that all this house and all this money and all this land has been bequeathed to her. She's not here, I'm here to take it. It don't matter how good the people like me, they can't sign it over to me, because legally, the enemy is counting on the fact that you don't even know what legally belongs to you. He is counting on the fact that you won't begin to ask questions about why things are the way they are. He is counting on the fact that you'll just sit there and let somebody else die of cancer. He is counting on the fact that you'll just sit there and let somebody else get locked up in a mental hospital. He is counting on the fact that you'll sit there and begin to say things like, well, you know, in my family, we all tend to have a little anxiety. We all tend to have a little depression. We all tend to struggle with high blood pressure. We all tend to have man problems. You know, nobody stays married. He is expecting you to come into agreement with the faulty line. Is this helping anybody? I said, is this helping anybody? Your inheritance is legally binding. It is left 
to you as your portion, as an inheritance, as a possession. The Bible says in the book of Hosea that upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and that Jacob will possess his possessions. Why? Because there was a season where Jacob had possessions that were not in his possession. You can have things that belong to you, have your name on it, but somehow, Lady Free, they're not in your possession. But God's getting ready to change that today. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4. Y'all give me about 10 more minutes and we'll start wrapping. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4 says this. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut. And when it says cord here, it's speaking of an umbilical cord. Your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloths. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out in the open field, for on the day you were born, you were despised. Then I passed by you and saw you kicking about in your own blood. And as you laid there in your blood, I said to you, live. This is a prophetic picture that God is giving us, talking to us about the birth of his nation, his child, his people, Israel. He's saying, listen, just so you understand how I found you, the condition you were in, uh, let me paint a picture. You were born and nobody even cut your umbilical cord. Uh, nobody cleaned you up. Nobody showed you any kind of love or pity. They didn't even wrap you in a blanket. They just left you there dying in your own blood. Uh, Nobody helped you understand uh, you had an inheritance. Uh, nobody helped you understand that you came from something. You came from somewhere. You have a name. Uh, nobody gave you a chance to live. Uh, come on. How many of us uh, were born into situations uh, where nobody gave you a chance? The scripture tells us that it is in the natural as it is in the spirit. So in the natural, come on, you ain't got to be a, a, a Harvard medical graduate to understand that when a baby is born, you got to cut their cord. We understand that in the natural. Why is it we don't get it in the spirit? Why is it we have full grown adults in the kingdom of God who still have a cord connecting them to their mama and their daddy's transgression? Why is it we have fully grown believers who are still connected by a cord of iniquity and transgression? And the same thing that happened to Uncle Juju is happening on repeat in your life. The same thing that happened to Uncle Susu keeps happening in your life because ain't nobody cut your cord. And so we find ourselves trying to understand why I'm stuck and trapped in this pattern of destruction. Come on. Why I keep dating the same man with different names, but he's the same exact guy. Why I keep starting businesses and six months later they close and they fail. Why is it that I've tried, come on, to break past this, this economic, uh, 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 this economic wall and I just can't break through this bracket. Why is it that I know God has called me to serve? God has called me to be in ministry. God has anointed me. God has placed oil on my head, but I just can't get this lust off of me. I keep going back to the same thing over and over and over again. Because ain't nobody cut your cord. You're still operating with the very thing you came out of the womb with. It's still on you. May I submit to you that many of us are walking around with an uncut cord. 
Now, what does this have to do with lines? When I began to study, I found out that the word cord and line are the exact same thing. The lines have fallen for me in all the right places. And here comes the enemy to hijack my lines. And he doesn't wait for me to be fully grown because he sets me up when I'm born. He sets me up coming out of the womb and he ensures that the cord of iniquity is never cut. And so here I am connected to some people that I've never even met. And the penalty of their unrighteousness is now on my life. The penalty of their disobedience got me having arthritis, osteoporosis, all kinds of inflammation and edema. And so because we don't know what to do with it, we say it's hereditary. Y'all give me five minutes. I feel the weight of God's presence. Lift your hands right quick. Just worship him. Deliverance is already taking place right now. The book of Proverbs declares that through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. The entrance of your word brings light. Things are already breaking off of many of you. Things are already breaking off many of you. If I had more time, I would explain to you that this baby that we're seeing here in this passage, when you, I started you out in verse four, but if you back up to verse three, you understand that God says in Ezekiel that this child was born from a Canaanite father and a Hittite mother. Canaan, hallelujah, was the child of Ham. How many remember Ham? Ham was the son of Noah who, who, who uncovered his father's nakedness. And so when Noah deals with him, he puts a curse on him. But listen, he doesn't say you are cursed he said curse be Canaan do you see how the curse hit his next generation why because the things that you and I tolerate in one generation the following generation will embrace in excess So you tolerating the enemy in this generation, he is going to have your children so bound with confusion. He's going to have your grandchildren so bound with sickness and disease. It will be normal to them to be laid up in a bed and be on 17 prescription drugs. It will be normal to them to believe that suicide is a solution and an answer. Because you refuse to deal with your cord. His mother was a Hittite. The word Hittite means broken in pieces. It means to be dismayed. It means to be in terror and in dread. This was what was in his cord. This was the cord that had not been cut. Listen, today God is about to transform you because we're going to cut that cord. I said, we're going to cut that cord. I don't know what you've been walking through all year, but God waited. Here we are. Come on. Almost halfway through the fourth quarter. We're getting ready to end this calendar year. And God is like, I refuse to allow you to step and cross into another year with a cord that has not been cut. I refuse to allow you to step into another year with the hand of the enemy on your life. I refuse to allow you to step into another another place in your life with the devil's foot on your neck we're gonna cut this cord we're gonna engage I don't know if we need to do it down here y'all bring it down here we're gonna engage in a prophetic act I don't know how we need to do this 
but but this is literally just a, like a jump rope uh, 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 from the store and 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 as a prophet one of the ways the Lord deals with me is we oftentimes will engage in prophetic acts on the out on the outside it is it is a representation hallelujah of our obedience and our faith that as we jump over this line that our lines that have been in the wrong place is getting pushed back to where it was ordained to be come on the thing that's been out of place in my life uh, is getting ready to return to where God intended it to be come on my ministry is coming back in the right alignment uh, come on my church uh, is coming back in the right alignment uh, my marriage uh, it's coming back in the right alignment uh, my destiny it's coming back my finances uh, it's coming back Somebody is getting ready to get your mind back. You getting ready to get your mind back. You getting ready to get your mind back. Come on and shout in this place. I want to give you one final instruction so you understand. Now, in science, there is something when you study genetics uh, that is called, uh, 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 they call it a recessive gene. Uh, a recessive gene is a phenomenon that happens uh, when you have a pool of people that have a similar gene pool. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, somebody is born that don't have the same green eyes as everybody else. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, somebody is born uh, that don't walk like everybody else walk. Somebody is born who got a different hair color that everybody else has had. Uh, why is that significant? Because when that happens in science, uh, they say that a line has been skipped. Uh, they say that a gene has been jumped over. And so I just came to let about a hundred of y'all know that you getting ready to jump the generational line. Oh! Shekora Bandahaya! I said God is getting ready to interrupt the cycle. God is getting ready to break the curse. God is getting ready to snatch you out. And so I don't know how they're going to do it. But I'm going to have us re recite a prayer. I don't know if you're going to have them come down a certain way. The only thing I ask is once you jump over it, do not walk back over it. Amen? So if you're going to come this way and then go that way, do not walk back over it. So however we want to line people up, however y'all want to do it, thank y'all for being gracious. Thank y'all for being gracious and following uh, the instructions of the, the serve team. But as you're doing that, I want you just to repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that it is the truth I know that sets me free. The truth I know sets me free. The truth I know sets me free. And in the name of Jesus, I sever every tie. I cut the cord to every demonic system, every evil altar, every generational curse that has connected me to my mother's side. And I want you to speak your mother's name. And I wanna cut the cord to everything connecting me to my father's side, speak his name. And if you don't know who your uh, biological parents say, you can just say to my parents, that's all right too. But repeat after me, in the name of Jesus, I exercise my priestly authority, I adjudicate, I legislate, I pronounce, I announce, and I prophesy that the cord is broken. My lines are restored. My lines are restored now, 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 in Jesus' name. Now, as you begin to march, follow instructions. I'm going to have maybe three of you jump at the same time. We can probably have, which way are they coming? 
that way so three of you line up at the same time and jump at the same time come on in Jesus name jump that line go ahead come on come on come on hurry hurry Your whole family, your whole family's coming out. Your children are coming out. Yep. Sickness and disease, divorce, it's broken. It's broken. Insanity, it's broken. Mental instability, it's broken. Lust, it's broken. Shekonarabasataya. Come on and praise him as you jump. Praise him as you jump. Come on. This praise is for my children. This praise is for my grandchildren. This praise is for my great grandchildren. Yay! God says as you're jumping, tumors are shrinking. I said as you're jumping, help! Tumors are shrinking. If you had a growth, if you had a growth or a tumor that you can physically feel, I want you to check for it now. Every ancestral spirit is cut off. Every ancestral spirit is cut off. Every door that's been opened by disobedience. Oh yes, idolatry. Oh yes. Oh Nabasaya Kataya Raba. Oh, it's broken off of your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, as you're walking back to your seat, you're worshiping. As you're walking back to your seat, you're stepping into a new season. You're stepping into a bigger tax bracket. You're stepping into open doors. You're stepping into new opportunities. Oh, na mama sataya. You're stepping out of elongated singleness. Oh, ne rebasaya. Shonda haya da da bosika. Oh yes, oh yes, oh na 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 ma sende hey 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 hey, rom na ma sindi hey, oh, sho na 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 ma si kon dia ha ya da 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 ba se ke, kon na ra ha ya di andoro ho ye re bando ro bo si ka, in the mighty name of Jesus, so na na ma se, oh. Y'all can come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep it going. Y'all might just need to try to work around so we can keep the line moving. Show na 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 ma 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 seke ye re basaya. Strongholds are breaking. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Two or three of y'all at a time. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Step into a new season. Step into a new season. Oh, na bara tabaseke. Increase, increase, increase. Shokom na na basaya. Man of God, right there, about to jump. Look at me. This man of God right here. God wants you to know that the demons that took your father's mind and the demons that got in the way of the purpose of God for your father will not touch you. God wants you to know that the portion that was assigned to your father that he was not able to fully lay hold of is getting ready to come upon you in this hour. And the Lord says you shall have double in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, keep jumping. Keep jumping. Hey, hey, hey. Show na 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 ma 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 se. Show kong na 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 ma se. 
release this word. This is what I heard concerning Pastor DJ and Lady Free. I heard the Lord say, I am causing you to recover. The hits that you have taken, the silent tears, and the questions that you have asked of me. The Lord says, I am causing you to recover. You are about to end this fourth quarter in a sweatless victory, says God. I see a great returning even of those who did not leave in honor. For they will hear, even as Naomi heard all the way in the land of Moab, that there is bread that has returned to Bethlehem. God says, even as Naomi heard all the way in a distant land, I will cause many to begin to hear that I am visiting this place. I will cause many to begin to hear that I am stirring the river and I am stirring the waters of revival here. And they will begin to long for home again. Yes, it is home, God says. Yes, it is home, God says. And for those that have departed, some ran, some were taken. But whatever it is, God says, I'm causing them to begin to hear that there is bread in the house again. He says, I will carry the sound of this house and I will amplify your voices and the people will come. He says, yea, they will return. Yea, they will even run for there shall find, hallelujah, they shall find here the bread of my presence. He says, even now the south wind has been awakened and it is blowing resources into this house. Oh yeah, Yes, the south wind is blowing and it is blowing over you it is blowing into this house the wind has been commanded to blow supporters it has been commanded to blow donors and sponsors to release funding into your hands for the vision and the Lord says think it not strange that it will be people that come to fund your vision who are not even of your faith think it not strange that there will be people who are not even believers think it not strange that it will be people that you've never heard or met of that will say I am supposed to release this to you God says the wind is now awakening them and they are coming in your direction and as God was downloading this word to me this is what I saw I saw two properties And I began to see, it, it, it's as if they will come one on the heels of another. It's, 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 it's almost as if when you acquire the first, before you're even done getting set up real good, God will release the next. And it's going to happen very rapidly. The Lord wants you to begin to prepare for what you will do with the territory. And so God says, tell them, prepare the manuals. He says, tell them, prepare the programming. He says, tell them, prepare for the arts education. He says, tell them, prepare for the after school and the summer enrichment. He says, for this day, I make of you a lighthouse 
oh yes, even now uh, I make of you a beacon. Uh, he says, prepare uh, and it shall be that people will come uh, and they will say, can I house my business here? Uh, can you give me an office here? Uh, can I have a space, a corner, a desk? Uh, because I just want to be in this atmosphere. So God says, make preparation uh, and get ready. Uh, and the next thing I saw is that God is going to begin to elevate millionaires in this house. Listen to me very carefully. That is a word I'm very careful to release. I understand the, the, that part of my prophetic mantle. I carry a very heavy uh, uh, financial mantle. I met a man a couple of months ago out of nowhere. I'd never seen him. And the Lord said to tell him he was a minister. He was pastoring a church. The Lord says, I'm calling you away from your pulpit in the way that you have led in your pulpit. And I'm getting ready to call you into government, even in another nation. And, and, and God had been dealing with him about that for months and he had not done it because he was like, first of all, what are we going to do with all these people? And second of all, I don't have money to do what you're calling me to do. And the Lord says, tell him that I'm getting ready to fund what I told him I would do. I promise you I can show you text messages in my phone where about the man found me him and his wife found me and he says we need to speak to you and your husband about a month and a half two months after I gave him this word he says I can't explain this to you but a man a white man that we do not know reached out to us and said he's been having dreams about me he's been seeing my face in his dream and so he started looking for me he started looking for me and ran across me somehow and this man contacted me and he says listen whatever it is that your dream is that you're supposed to do I'm supposed to fund it and so I want to release funds into you and so he was like okay and he's thinking the man is gonna give him a five thousand dollar check a ten thousand dollar check the man gave him a hundred million United States dollars I said a hundred million American dollars. I can show you the text in my phone. And so I'm very mindful of the financial mantle that we carry. And so when I release that into this house, because I see it and I hear it, that God is raising up millionaires in this house. Here's the thing. When God raises you up to that dimension, it is not for you. He will not trust you or entrust to you that type of resource if you don't know what to do with it. If you don't have a plan for it. If you haven't already uh, 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 in your heart established. Listen, whatever God puts in my hand. Uh, listen, Pastor DJ and Lady Free, we building a second location. We planning another campus. We doing this. This is how much I'm going to sow into that. And so, as I say one more time, God is raising me. Uh, millionaires in this house I need you to shout if you believe it <laughs>